I want to show you the power of primary care endoscopy by giving you a taster with four of my patients. Imagine they come to see you as they did to me with the worrying question, have I got skin cancer doc? Grab a pen for my mini quiz. Your answers could be one of these. There's a few facts you need to know before we embark on this journey together. First of all, 8% of all deaths from skin cancer are due to melanoma. A missing one is, let's just say, going to be problematic. Secondly, the most common location for a melanoma in men is on the trunk and it's on the legs for ladies. And finally, a new genuine mole in someone over the age of 45 is unusual. And if they're over the age of 60, it has a one in four chance of being a melanoma. Are you ready? Your first patient is 47 years old. Her opening words to you were, I'd like you to refer me on the two week cancer care pathway. I have a melanoma. She'd been to hospital for another problem and showed this dark new mole to a doctor there. He told her it was a melanoma. It's three to four millimeters in diameter, flat to touch and black with a slight pink on one of the edges. What do you do? Your second patient is 53 years old and his wife had noticed a few months ago this dark mark on his upper back which he thought was slowly getting larger. It was raised and slightly firm to touch and approximately 7 millimetres in diameter. What would you do? Your third patient is a 43 year old lady and she comes to you with this 7 by 10 millimetre firm red nodule on her lower abdomen. It's been there several years growing slowly but on occasion she catches it and it bleeds. What do you do? And finally, patient four, she's 52 years old and presents having noticed this two to three millimeter flat lesion on her right knee 12 months previously. It has no symptoms. What do you do? Have you made your decisions yet? Time to learn some demoscopy and then apply your new knowledge to these patients to see if demoscopy makes a difference. Capillary hemangiomas are benign vascular tumors classified as hamartomas because they are an abnormal proliferation of a normal tissue in a normal location, often called Campbell de Morgan spots when smaller macules or cherry angiomas when raised larger papules. They occur in approximately 5% of adolescents, becoming increasingly common with age. It's estimated 75% of 75 year olds will have them. Some people have an awful lot. Usually they're asymptomatic. They are equal in both sexes and in skin of any color type, but more noticeable in white skin. Most capillary hemangiomas occur sporadically without a clear familial or genetic link. They're usually bright red in color because the blood traveling through the abnormal capillaries is oxygenated. If it's deoxygenated, then they could appear blue or purple. And if the blood clots, they could appear black. Each lobule is called a lacoon, the plural being lacunae. In some countries, lacoons are called red clots. The stroma, the lacoon, Coon I sit within can be clear, a monkey yellow, or sometimes even a blue white color. There should be no brown in a capillary hemangioma unless it collides by chance with a pigmented lesion, such as a lentigo. There should be no blood vessels traversing the surface of the skin lesion or within the lacoons themselves. There is a huge variation in how these lacoons look. Some are smudged at the edges, others overlap and blend into the others. Some are just coils of dilated vessels. You know what? I think it's time to apply this knowledge to your four patients. This is what you find. Consider your management and what you would do now. Do you change anything from before? Can you spot the odd one out? This first lady was my eureka moment with demoscopy. Every fibre of my body was poised to refer her as a possible melanoma until I saw this demoscopy. The lacoons, no brown or vessels. Unless you were 100% sure this wasn't a melanoma, you'd be referring her on the cancer care pathway, right? I showed her the images, explained why I was confident to reassure her and she left happy. Result. This gentleman has this growing on his back. A typical location and age for a melanoma. Again, are you 100% sure this isn't a melanoma without demoscopy? Otherwise, you're going to refer just to be sure. However, has this dermoscopic image changed your mind? I was able within 10 seconds to make a clear diagnosis, take images for his records as evidence and reassure him confidently. Result again. What about this large red nodule? Sure, it's slow growing, but it's bleeding. Again, not brown, large lacoons that over the years have become lakes and a typical blue-white stroma. Very reassuring to me. This isn't a melanoma or cancer. I'll let you refer routinely as it's causing symptoms for its removal. I did that myself and histology confirmed this was a capillary hemangioma. It's the largest capillary hemangioma I've ever seen. Finally, this tiny flat lesion. So small, it was actually difficult to see clearly with the naked eye. The 12 months history might reassure us, but it's on the leg and she's over 45. When I put my dermoscope
microscope on it, I instantly recognise that this is no capillary hemangioma. It's a nebus with aggregated globules and being at the periphery, suggesting this is a growing lesion. She's 52 and this is unusual. Therefore, I was concerned that this was an early melanoma, referred her on the two-week cancer care pathway and then when it was removed, it was a severely dysplastic nevus. This was the one that really needed removing and referral. Did you monitor any of these lesions? If a skin lesion is new, raised and growing, monitoring should be avoided. If it happens to be a nodular melanoma, a delay will affect your patient's prognosis. Did you take any photographs for Telederm for a second opinion? Telederm is where you take a photograph and send it to a dermatologist to triage it for you. I think Telederm is the crack cocaine of general practice. Watch this video here to understand why. It's perfectly acceptable to take photographs, importantly including dermoscopic images, and sending them so long as you follow the patient up closely and use it as a learning opportunity. As your confidence grows, you'll find you'll be referring less and less. There's two key points I want you to take away from this video other than the dermoscopy of capillary hemangiomas. First, dermoscopy makes a difference. It will reduce unnecessary referrals and give you the power and ability to be confident to reassure many of your patients that they don't have cancer. That's one of our main functions in primary care, isn't it? Please nod. And secondly, there is much variation in how these red lacoons and capillaries look. And the more you look, the greater your ability to confidently identify them will be. Let me close with a montage of pictures from some of the capillary hemangiomas I've seen over the years. training a primary care demoscopist for every general practice.